Hey guys, and welcome to the channel. I'm Zemo, the Dan DPS, and we're back with another episode of The Good, The Scrap, and The Script, a series where I review weapons I've found and or made in Appalachia, and today's one is an interesting one. But before we get into it, don't forget to leave a like, a comment, and subscribe. So, today's weapon is the Magic Missile. This has armor penetration and double crit on it, and it is a cremator. Now, you guys know the cremator all too well. These weapons typically are used to canvas a large area, used with multi-shot in order to burn as many enemies as possible and get the most out of the damage over time effect that it does. However, I rolled this version and I realized that damage over time wasn't exactly going to work with this weapon. Um, armor penetration does not buff it in any way shape or form so you just get a base damage and I decided what would happen if I made this weapon to specifically damage things you know just to attack them and that's kind of the gist of it we're gonna see how effective this weapon is at killing targets just by shooting them in the face essentially um, and seeing how it goes obviously we're primarily going to rely on the VAT side of it but we're going to see what we can do with this weapon either way now as usual we're going to have a quick looky look at our build this is what we're using don't read into it too much but pretty much everything on here is to try and maximize the amount of damage we can do there it isn't perfect but it is what we're using but yeah, obviously with the Cremator there is a lot of problems with this weapon in general. People use it in very different ways. Now you're seeing the damage from this uh, just going by like the initial hit there was actually not too bad. Now when it comes to the, the burning damage it didn't really do anything. The one thing I would say though in regards to this is that you're probably not going to want to like spam this weapon. Um, because the sheer amount of damage it does is, is, is great, but you're seeing if you, you miss the target, you know, it's quite an expensive weapon to to be running. Um, the, the fire damage is great, and you're seeing with crits, you're going to definitely instantly kill things. Um, but your, your main problem is a lot of enemies aren't going to be giving you back the fuel that you're using you know you're, you're seeing that we're only getting like 9 15 back from just common enemies so it's one of those weapons that if you've got a lot of fuel to burn you've got a lot of fuel to spare it is actually quite viable you know it, it's you know it one shots things um in, in a lot of aspects i mean uh super mutants are one of the, the, t the tougher enemies in the game uh, not the toughest, obviously, but they are tougher than than others. Now, what I would say is that you're probably better going for the body shots, just to kind of guarantee those hits um, with that. Because if you're going for the head shots, you're going to struggle. But, you know, out of, out of that, I'm actually able to take these things down quite happily you know with a legendary enemy we're getting for some reason 35 ammo back there oh, I killed it before i could do anything uh, but you're seeing it, it's not the most ammo efficient method of using this weapon it really isn't and this is the the kind of thing is that you are going to be able to take things down quite confidently but in a, in a sustainable sense of is it worth the ammo that you're using to take out each individual enemy? I, I, I'd find it hard to justify in, in regular use, I'll be honest. But the damage is you know, good. So, you know, against bosses that have high amounts of armor, like the, the robots, this is actually a kind of viable weapon. Yeah, you're going to use a crap load of ammo. You really are. But there are lots of methods to get ammo for this this type of weapon that i think is absolutely fine Alrighty, with the super out of the way we now have jeff that i've said multiple times during this this is not a weapon that i would recommend that you are using in your day-to-day -day use this is this is something i'd recommend that you save for bosses um bigger targets uh, with heavy amounts of armor and you're seeing there, like, with that headshot crit, this thing completely took half of Jeff's health off. This is a weapon that will do some really big ticket damage. But 
it does come at the, the side of expensive ammo. Now, as it comes with any of these videos, we come to take a big look at the, uh, the queen here. And what we're going to do is we are going to lay into her legs and see who this does. Now, it seems like we're doing decent damage. It's not like this is like a ridiculous amount of uh, damage either. It's it's just kind of like, yeah, it, it, we're doing damage. Um, the main thing I would say is that this will take her down quicker than the majority of weapons. Like, what well, again, it's, is it worth the cost of the fuel? Because we're getting only 24 back and I spent over a hundred odd to take her down. And granted, there's a lot of weapons that actually, yeah, you're, you're not really getting your ammo back when you're fighting against the Scorch Beast, uh, Scorch Beast Queen, the Marlark Queen. They're one of the tankier enemies in the entire game and they are just an overall pain in the butt to deal with. Another thing as well, this, this weapon, if you fire it close to you, unlike the other cremators, this one really hurts up close. You do not want to be getting caught in your own blast with this. It is actually genuinely going to ignore a lot of your armor and kick the crap out of you. So you need to be really careful when firing this close range like you would with a grenade launcher or a mini nuke launcher. So be careful with that as well. So as with any of these videos, we come to expeditions and we'll see exactly how well this does now. I'm going to go for body shots. And when it comes to taking down these guys, so that missed I think, um, your, your actual kill rate on your regular what it called, overgrown is pretty much the same as it, it normally is. You know, they, they, there is not an issue with taking these down. So in terms of in expeditions, you're, you're actually, yeah, this is definitely a weapon that would be really viable in expeditions um, as the normal one is. These things are so weak to the cremator's dot damage and just fire damage in general that you're going to get your ammo back fairly confidently. Um, it's, it's not a bad thing at all, but it does add that kind of advantage of if you are going to use this in here, you are probably going to one-shot most of the enemies just by direct hits. But when you come against the bosses, you're probably going to have a bit more of an easy time dealing with all of them. And, and you're saying, like, it, it's not a bad weapon to use in here. It doesn't lose any real advantages in, in this setting. Things die, I'll be honest, quicker? Like, if you, you get that direct hit, things are almost certainly dead. But then you can still bombard them from a distance it's not stopping you from doing that you know you can still do all the things that you have done with this weapon previously in this setting it's just it's doing more of that upfront damage than really relying on its burn but at the same time the burn completely annihilates everything other than the bosses in here so my final thoughts on this are, are quite mixed um, what I will say about this weapon is that if you're to use it in general use against basic enemies, yeah, in a lot of cases you're probably going to instantly kill anything you shoot with it. The burn damage is going to then potentially finish them off. Against your slightly bigger targets like super mutants, you know, things that are not heavily armoured but, you know, just bulkier, then it isn't quite as effective against them in terms of one-shotting them. But at the same time, it is going to kill them quite easily. Now the real issue comes with ammo. Against enemies, if you're one shot on them and you're getting 10 or more ammo back, then you are perfectly fine. You're, you know, you're going to re recuperate your losses. And if you're getting multiple targets with the one hit and killing them, then great. But if you are firing this at, you know, a super mutant and it takes two free shots, then more times than not, you're not going to get your ammo back. That being said, when you're up against a big target like, um, you know, the Scorch Beast Queen, Super Mutant Behemoths, uh, Mirelurk Queens, all that, you're not going to get that ammo back with a regular cremator either. You're really not getting the ammo back regardless. But with this against the big targets, you are going to do more damage quicker and, you know, save ammo. 
So against big armoured targets, this is actually the better option of the two variations of the weapon, whether you're going for damage over time or this. This usually will work out really well, especially if you land some of those fast crits on the weak points of the enemies. And then when you come to expeditions, you're not going to actually notice a huge difference. If you're only using the cremator in expeditions, this is the better option because this will take down the bosses quicker than a regular cremator would. So I think there is actually a niche and a use for the anti-armor double crit cremator. It's just not the best weapon to use for what I would recommend you using it for. But at the same time, it's not a bad option either. Either way, guys, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you all next time in the Wasteland. Through the dark, moonlight's dimly shadow, a shadow creeping. Feel your heart entwining, a twisting mind, seeking prey to devour. In the dead of the night, he gains more power. His bloodshot eyes, the fire burning within, a predator lurking ready to commit his sin. He moves in silence, you can't hear a sound, chasing shadows, hunting till you're found. Chasing shadows, he's the hunter in the night.